It's the podcast that shakes and stirs up pharmacy. Welcome to PBN on the Rocks. Whoa. What shit show did I jump into here? Oh, ha! <laughs> it's quite the shit show. It's oh, a I hear you. Shit show. I hear you. <laughs> it's, it's time to give some PBM some hell, right? Absolutely. Man, I know, I know. You, you motherfucker, <laughs> you're always missing me on LinkedIn. That's me, dude. Yeah, I'm the, I'm the guy that's relentless on LinkedIn. Yeah, that's me. Oh, my God. You're lucky I haven't laid into you. I just, I haven't because, like, I was like, well, he seems likable. I normally fucking murder people who try to solicit me on LinkedIn. Hey. I know exactly what you're doing. I'm getting canned messages. <laughs> I had that from the beginning. And I know I'm getting canned messages, but I normally have aggression to take out on people. I'm just like. Oh, you bitch. Well, well <laughs> hey, hey, all you get is look me up and you'll be like, you know what? Every other asshole who's sending me these messages, I hate, but not that guy. I get on uh, LinkedIn mostly so I can post shit in a more professional environment because whenever I'm cursing on Twitter, it really doesn't land sometimes because Twitter's a fucking wasteland. But yeah. if I start cursing at people on LinkedIn, they're like, oh, oh, there's a <laughs> like, pearl clutching when I start doing that. So I'm a yeah. big fan. <laughs> Well, I can, I can, I can tell you, man. If you want to see some crazy shit, you go to Twitter. Twitter is where the shit goes down, man. That's what, at least, at least my belief. Oh, you know, I know. <laughs> I mean, oh, good lord, people, people go at each other. Yeah, I don't get on Twitter very often because I, uh, I don't like to see just utter aggression towards people. But towards the PBMs, yeah, go at it, go at them. Utter aggression towards those assholes is much needed. So, anyways. Hi, yeah. Five minutes late, and I'm already into the PBM hate. I love it. <laughs> Pretty much. Hi, Sana. We are so happy that you are here. And for everybody listening, she is a pup member who, uh, today, who uh, reached out to us to let us know that she appreciates PBM on the rocks. And we were like, that's so great that somebody's listening. Yay. 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 So Yay. Listen Yay. All the time. Now we're glad to have you. Welcome. Thank you. Actually, when you emailed me uh, if I wanted to be on the show, my pharmacy had just been broken into the night before. Oh, God. And oh, I gosh. was basically running on like two hours of sleep because I showed up there at like three in the morning. And then I stayed there all the way until we opened because they, they broke the front door. So I couldn't just like leave it like that. Went home, got some rest, and then came back to the pharmacy like two hours later. And then I got your email and I was like, oh, this has redeemed my day. <laughs> <laughs> You're in California, aren't you? I am, yeah. I'm we get a lot of California pharmacists on the show. <laughs> Y'all are awesome. That's true. Hi. We have. Yes, we do. All right. So I think that... We have all had a chance to introduce ourselves, but have we had a chance to introduce what we are drinking today? Oh, well, no, we haven't. Well, we haven't even really introduced ourselves. We just pretty much went in and just started bitching, you know. Technically, well, we, we never introduce ourselves. Fuck them. If they're listening to this, they're degenerates anyway. Who cares? <laughs> I think it was about saying that, Jeremy, you need no introduction. If people don't know who you are by now, then they probably shouldn't be listening to PBM on the rocks anyway. But, Jeremy, what no. are you drinking, sir? Right now, I didn't have time to go by the liquor store, but I had a bunch of Heineken's in the fridge, so I'm just down on a bunch of Heineken's. And I'll, I'll probably go through about six in this hour, and that'll probably get me halfway of where I normally go. But, you know, whatever. Halfway to your happy place. Because yeah. that's how bad PBMs are, everybody. April is Stress Awareness Month, and we are bringing the awareness of the stress we are feeling. Cheers. <laughs> yep. So, Shannon, my lady, what are you drinking today? Well, um, it is Stress Awareness Month. Uh, De-stress requires alcohol and laughter. So mm -hmm. I am drinking... A lovely bottle of red wine in a glass that reminds me to laugh because it has the measuring levels of LOL, OMG, and WTF. And I see your and past WTF on yours. Is that right? I yeah. started with LOL and then, you know, went up. But I did, just to make sure that the stress getting too high, I did bring the bottle and a straw. Okay. Oh, so my God. Just in case the, the stress the gets too bad, we have <laughs> the bottle and the straw. We can turn this nonsense into a sippy cup. Oh, I oh, thought you were going to use the airflow to chug it quicker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wine bottle and straw, duly noted. All right, Sona, what are you drinking? I've just got a classic mojito here. Love it. Yep. Nice. Love it. Well, and, you know, and, and what, what just for the rest of us, maybe who don't have lovely spring weather, what's the weather like where you are today? 
It, it was actually very pleasant today. It was like high 60s. I think it reached like 71. So we were having a little rainy spell last week. So the weather is great. It's like very clear and nice outside right now. Excellent. Sounds like perfect mojito. Yeah, but Sona, I yeah. thought you had your drink in a very special mug. Oh. I also have a water mug with my with my FPBMs mug here. Nice. <laughs> Look it off PBMs. <laughs> Yay. Yay. That's awesome. Okay, great. All right. When I saw that mug, I was like, I gotta get a bunch of them. <laughs> I don't even have one. That's that's how far behind I am. Shannon and I were talking about the pest store the other day, and I'm like, what's our best sellers? And she's like, the mugs. And I'm like, the mugs? You're so good. Oh my god, that's right, the mugs. So yeah. Oh, you know what we need to do? We need to make, you know, the Austin Powers, like, UK flag underwear, the British flag underwear. We need that, but it's the fuck PBMs thing. I would wear them every day to work. The little bikini briefs that just said fuck PBMs. I'd wear it every single day. I would totally wear them yeah. every day. <laughs> there is, uh, that's not at all where I thought you were going with that, but that just inspired me to think, you know what else we need? We need special PBM on the rocks, like highball glasses and beer glasses. We need barware. Oh, yes. 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 Yeah. Uh, yeah. I wonder nice. if we could, I wonder if we could pull off creating the, um, formed ice cubes. Ooh, we could. And you know, <laughs> I'm not going out everybody in she the shape of what the she bird. does. <laughs> Jan is the problem solver at Putt. She figures out the stuff like that. Okay, uh, Madam President, what are you drinking today? Well, like Jeremy, didn't have a chance to go to the liquor store. But since we do sip and shop, I have my own <laughs> box. And I make oh, look at that. With the wine in the box, you don't need the straw. You no. have the little thing. So you can literally go like fraternity party and turn yeah. it up from the box. It's called slap bag. Good. <laughs> it's great. So this reminds Dan me. was just straight up like, I'm still at the pharmacy, so I got a box of wine and some Xanaxes. She's going to go to town. <laughs> so, so, somebody call her a cab right now. <laughs> ben, 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 what are you drinking today? I got, I got a Bloody Mary. All right, let so, it be known that Ben has outclassed all of us. Yeah, okay. so, so I got a South Carolina Bloody Mary. Define so, difference. Okay, all right, so you get Bloody Mary mix, get your favorite, then you add... Um, Salt and pepper, little Worcestershire. How do we say that damn word? Um, <laughs> Worcestershire. Worcestershire. Yeah, Worcestershire. whatever the hell that word is. <laughs> yeah. And then Worcestershire and then, at the brewery. Yeah, and then, you, <laughs> and, then, and then you and then you add some damn horseradish, <laughs> and, and you and you go to town. Nice, it's spicy as hell, and you know what? Because I'm pretty spicy tonight. Spicy Bloody Mary. Excellent. Nice. I'm nice. so happy. In Texas, that you, you must with add us. Tabasco to all Bloody Marys. Yes. I, I I add I add the horseradish. I like the horseradish taste. Um, I I will add Tabasco every once in a while. I don't have Tabasco. That's probably why I didn't do it. But um, but yeah. So try the horseradish. If you don't, if you haven't tried it, it's, it adds a nice kick to it. Yep. Fun fact: South Carolina is the horseradish state. No, it's we, not. We I don't that. know that. <laughs> we no, we <laughs> we eat we eat the shit out of some horseradish. I'm serious. Like <laughs> prime rib horseradish. Cocktail sauce, put some damn horseradish in it. You know, mix some ketchup. Oh, yeah. And some yeah, that's the ketchup, best way to do it. Ketchup, okay. ketchup, lemon juice, Worcestershire horseradish, put it all, you know, and if it in the whiter it is, the hotter it is, so make that shit white. It'll freaking <laughs> clear, it'll clear you out. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like South Carolina is with its horseradish, what New Mexico is with its green chili, which by the way, I'm a green chili wimp which is why I would probably not last long in, in South Carolina because I'd have about this much horseradish and I'd probably like be screaming for a sinus replacement. Sure, sure. <laughs> All right, that's awesome. All right, Brandy, our Texas board member, what are you drinking? I am having my favorite black cherry vodka and club soda. Yay. That Yummy. is so you. I love that. Yes. You're seeing me. I'm going to tell you, I just, you know, I was like hustling home, like to jump on here. And I like hit my garage door opener and I was like, why's the garage opening? So I go and I'd like type in the code and I'm like, oh, the battery must be dead. I go to the front door and I'm like hitting the code because, of course, who carries the key to their house anymore? No one. Well, apparently everyone but me. So I'm like, no, typing I got a code. <laughs> yeah. Nothing's happening. So I'm like going around to the back door and I come inside. And I'm like, what? And I flip on the light and I'm like, there is no electricity. So then I'll like run out the front door and I'm seeing like everyone else like looking outside and I'm like, oh, great. So that's oh, no. the natural light of the window. 
because we have no electricity in my neighborhood. I, oh, shoot. I, 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 I thought you were going to say you're at the wrong house. And I'm like, man, you know, I've heard of, bra- <laughs> I've right? heard of, bra- I've heard of brain dead pharmacy owners, but you take the cake. <laughs> for sure. No, no. Lauren, we haven't heard from you. What are you drinking? I am drinking a Topo Chico margarita because I am enjoying Florida right now. Woo. <laughs> All right. So then, the, so then for what I'm drinking, I'm Monique, everybody. I'm sure that also goes without Hi, saying. Monique. Hi, everybody. We're supposed to do that in unison. We practiced this for 10 hours. <laughs> it still didn't work. It's still not coordinated. Damn it. All right. So I, so I said earlier, I was doing some research and I got to thinking about this and I realized, oh, okay, so Brandy, her state is the lucky state that is in the path of the solar eclipse which will be happening uh, just a couple days after we air our episodes. So I made a drink called the Solar Eclipse. Nice. nice. Yes. Nice. And and before everybody gets Fancy. all ooh, ah, let me tell you what's in the Solar Eclipse so you can decide if you want to try this or not. It's um, it's orange soda with dark rum floated on top and an orange slice. And the nice. thing that's best about this is that the dark rum really does float on top of that soda. So when you drink it and you're mean, you're not used to drinking rum, you get a whole lot of rum right up front. Mm, yummy, uh, yummy. So that's that. where the but, straw comes in. Yeah. I was looking yes. for straw. <laughs> I don't have any. I am without straw. But it, but it's um it's an actual cocktail. Yeah, I did not make this up. You can Google it or you can just check the show notes because the recipe will be there. Fun Perfect. Time. Are, you, hey! uh, are you looking forward to the solar eclipse? Do you have any plans for that? I'm going to be on an airplane. During the during the solar eclipse, what the hell is that going to look like? Uh, that's cool. That's gonna be are, are they, are they, are they, are they even to see it? Are they even going to fly? I mean, I was like, what the hell? Are they can they even fly a plane? But they let me book it. No, Woo-hoo! baby, it's fun. It's, yeah. it's a little. Maybe. It's a, It's very well known that airplanes fall out of the sky during the solar eclipse. So I would right. recommend you. Yeah. Okay, again, just kidding. That's not Ch- going to happen. Change change <laughs> beneficiary from ex wife to somebody else on my life insurance is what you're saying. Yes. Go ahead. All right. All right. Okay. <laughs> oh, man, let me, just, let me, we can oh, just man. blame it on United Health Group. I mean, okay. they keep Perfect. getting hacked. They yeah. must have affected the FAA. It's their fault. Yeah, if Boeing. Happens. The Boeing. They they built the software for the Boeing airplanes, and doors are flying off their freaking planes now. Yeah. I mean, it's it's. <laughs> there's some, hey, yeah. listen. I'm convinced. That's why that I'm behind, happy, guys. I'm convinced they're behind these damn break-ins too. The PBMs. Just want to freaking harass everybody that they're freaking sending people to break in your pharmacies too. Guaranteed, guaranteed. No, I hate flying, and that's why I'm really happy that APHA is having their conference in Nashville next year. And me and angry pharmacists have got together and decided, and I've not cleared this with you all at all, and went ahead and made a <laughs> lot of plans that we are going to live stream our personal podcast of PBM on the Rocks. Ooh. From APHA next year, where we yes. live stream and comment on everything happening and get super, super fucking trashed right in the middle of it. We will be thrown out within two hours, but it will be completely legendary. And we'll just saunter on down to downtown Nashville, where we continue to get messed up and try to get back in the next day. So there we're going to live stream PBM on the Rocks so it, from so APHA be, next year. Be, that will be a special episode. Yes, we'll have a, a very special, special a special APHA episode. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's going to be great. I don't think they'll even let me into NCPA at this point, but I'm pretty sure I can get to APHA because those nerds are never fucking paying attention. Sneak you in. Sneak you in. That's you perfect. Heard it here. That's I, perfect. I, I will. I will re- oh, no. <laughs> I'm going to get a booth, and I'm going to have a PBM on the Rocks logo, and we're going to do it from the booth, and we're going to say a <laughs> lot of really fucked up things. We've, we've already been making material. It's going to be insane. And Monique's oh, looking frightened. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking, how do I get plausible deniability out of all That's, of this? Yeah. Uh, honey, that, that ship yeah, is Yeah, I don't know who these people are. That ship is Jeremy, You're going to need to get not, yeah, no. Miguel or greg or mark or bosom and snow on retainer yeah, prior to your trip <laughs> someone, i mean think about it even just like th- making fun of the students coming in that have no clue what they're doing or nervously trying to find their seat like oh here oh, they come are they gonna get mind. it are they gonna get it oh man <laughs> heckling random people 
I'm going to go and I'm going to like treat it like it's like some kind of a uh, comic book convention. And I'm going to cosplay like, as Karen Lynch. Yeah. You're just going to go full on dress as Karen Lynch. It's going to be amazing. Oh yeah. so Jeremy, you're you're going look amazing going to dress and up as Karen Lynch. I will dress up as Karen Lynch. So he'll wear a Barbie I, I, dress and a blonde wig to go with the cover of the book that she just released. Yes. I will first, I will first follow out, you I'm going to be me. Like first out, I'm going to be me. After I'm kicked out, I'm going to try to get back in as Karen Lynch. <laughs> you're paparazzi. <laughs> Donna, yes. you're in Southern California. Um, do you have a version of Malibu Barbie House that we can send Jeremy oh, to man. complete his ensemble? <laughs> nice. You know, I mean, there may be, but that's not really my thing, so I have no idea. <laughs> no, the best thing is I'm not even going to shave my legs. They're just going to be hairy and out there. It's going to be beautiful. <laughs> mm -hmm. And if we said you have flat feet, would you know what that means? Oh, I have flat feet. I know I have flat feet. <laughs> okay. I, I think you're taking that literally, darling. Yeah. yeah it's no, a, it's no, I, I do have literal flat feet. I don't know what you mean by that, but I'm going to be in heels and it's going to be hideous. Well, when you see Barbie, you'll know exactly what that means. Oh, I have <laughs> seen Barbie. Okay. Okay. I know what you're saying. Yeah. You're saying. I think that we should, I think we should start sending Jeremy some heels to practice in. There you go. That's fine. Emily's got tiny little feet. <laughs> Ain't no way I'm getting into those. Give me some big old honking heels. I'll do it. I wear 11 and a half. So. Give me some big heels. I know what I'm sending you for your first Father's Day. Nice. <laughs> I got some heels. Yeah. So ben, what's, ben, what's going on in uh, in pharmacy insurance group world? We're going to talk more about this on a future podcast. Oh, the well, if we can get pharmacy owners to, get to understand what we're doing, you know, it's like it's one of those things. It's like talking to a guy today and it's like, well, I don't want to sell something. And then do something and i'm just like dude it's already happening somebody's selling this crap to your people and you're right. already you, yeah you're already not filling certain scripts because you're getting your ass kicked and you're losing money on them and uh either why does it feel right not doing that selling the plan and then not filling a script and i'm like geez you're already freaking doing it we have so many people adopting this model it's wonderful but we still run into the people who are like man i don't know i don't know our new our new slogan is join or die. And you'll hear you'll see this a lot. <laughs> join or die. And people are like, did that come from Game of Thrones? Speaking of Game of Thrones, right? Did that come from Game of Thrones on that? No, it's not bend your knee or die. It's join or die. Because again, the Gadsden flag from the Revolutionary War, if you remember, the snake flag, join our revolution or die. And the fact of the matter is, is that. Pharmacy owners cannot just sit around and take what comes in their door anymore. They have to be out front influencing patients and helping them understand what's going on as an agent, not as a pharmacy owner, not as a pharmacist. You can have that conversation as an agent. You can't have that as a pharmacy owner. So the goal there is to have that really impactful conversation about how these PBMs are treating the pharmacy and then help those patients make, because when you factor that in, a patient will choose to pay a little bit more for an insurance plan in order for that pharmacy to stay in business. Yeah, of course. So, Preach it. Preach it. <laughs> it's, you, we got to do it. We got to do it, people. I mean, come on. We got to do this. I know when you went to pharmacy school, you thumbed your nose at us insurance agents. I know you did it, but guess what? Now you need to join us. Don't thumb your nah, nose man, at us. I'm going to cut you off right there. Fuck no. I'm not selling insurance. Well, 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 a ton of die, Jeremy. Yeah. So, so it's clear that Ben in a past life was Paul Revere yeah. and thank goodness <laughs> for that because we have a country that we have that hadn't been for Paul Revere. And if we just take the case that Ben is Paul Revere again for the pharmacy industry, thank goodness we have him because I think you're right. 100% think you're right. Uh, not everyone's going to see it that way. But that's okay because, for example, our president, Deb, who is joining that revolution, could just travel on down to Jeremy's store and work it out with his patients. That, so that, they get that, that is, I'll do it. I educate the yep. patients all I want, but like it straight up, I didn't think we were allowed to actually push insurance to patients. Like, uh, I thought that was an actual like law. Nope, it is not or a Or is law. that just Part D plans? No, it's not Part D plans. It's not Advantage plans. It's none of that crap. You have been you have been sold a bill of goods.
by the PB industry, excuse me, saying you can't do this when in fact we hired the highest powered Medicare attorney on this planet, I paid him $100,000 to go in and figure this out. And the, the absolute truth is you can do this. Yes. Yeah. We have over a thousand pharmacies doing it now. Huh. I mean, it makes total sense. that you. Yeah, really how were we told this that many years? Really? I, yeah. They, they wouldn't even tell us like they were telling us that we couldn't straight up like recommend back when certain plans were even better than other plans and paid out more. We couldn't even recommend those. Well, it's, it's so, so that's what so, I'm, I'm wondering was how that changed. Well, so what you're doing is number one, you're not, you're not operating as a pharmacist. You're acting as an agent. You can have a much bigger, more encompassing conversation about as an agent. Okay. Number two, you're not steering them. You're giving them the information, the truth about what's going on. And they are choosing the plan. You can say, for example, you can say this plan actually treats our pharmacy better than that plan. You can give them that information. As an agent, I do it all the time. When somebody calls me and they want to stay in their independent pharmacy, I say, listen, that so-and-so plan sucks. This plan sucks a little bit less. I'm all for that. I'm all for that. But we're not getting like commission or anything on it, are we? You are getting commission, yes. If uh, we set up, see, that's where I thought there might be issues with it. Nope. But nope, I'm all no for issues. like pushing them toward a plan that's a better plan overall for them and for us. I think that's something we should be doing. And that's something I've been doing even when I thought it was illegal to do so. Just like I ignored <laughs> all the gag clauses and I ignore pretty much fucking anything that I don't yeah. like. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, yeah, I well, agree with you on that. Yeah. Well, and, here's but the thing. The whole. Commission things kind of like, yeah. If we set it up, if we set it up correctly, we keep everything separate. You can get paid the commissions on that as well. Yep, absolutely. All right. See, I'm, I'm the kind of guy you got to win it over because it's like, yeah, that's that. Call, I was here to talk, and I was like, oh my, like, <laughs> call, I call can't my, do I gotta, that. I, I will I, get like railroaded if I yeah, do that. Nope, nope, nope. We've had this tested now by a couple of the carriers have gone in and checked out what we're doing and hundred percent, it's a hundred percent legal and there's no issues with steering, no start, no kickback rules, nothing doesn't violate any of the Medicare rules. The only thing that we cannot do in this is we cannot sell Medicare insurance or do enrollments where we practice healthcare. So you literally have to do it for out from behind the counter. I mean, that's it. That's like the only rule. There's nothing that says a pharmacist can't do it. A technician can't do it. Literally anybody can do this. The bigger issue is where it's done. You just can't do it where you practice healthcare. It's you have to be very deliberate and very specific about how you do this. So you cannot talk about it behind the counter in the pharmacy. If somebody comes to the pharmacy and says, Hey Deb, I want to talk about Medicare Part D, what you have to say is, Okay, meet me over there. We we have a little table set up up front. And you very physically take your lab coat off and you go out and talk to him and says, I am not Deb the pharmacist right now. I am Deb, your insurance agent. And that needs to be very distinct. So once gotcha. we once we cross those hurdles, we're like, crap, let's do it. We set up a separate LLC, keep it separate from the pharmacy. All of our record keeping is done separate. We're not blending any of the two. Um, and the great news about starting an insurance agency, it's a hell of a lot less expensive than starting a pharmacy. I can tell you that. Yeah. So <laughs> do we have to keep a separate LLC, anything like that? I recommend you keep a separate LLC, uh, typically, especially if you have partners. Well, it's a good thing I have King Jeremy LLC. There you go. <laughs> oh, King, my God. King, King, King Jeremy right, insurance. Change to King Jeremy. It's awesome. <laughs> Jeremy, join the revolution. Yeah. Oh, I'm thinking about it now. I'm thinking board. about it now. How about May. Board, uh, May. I'll meet you in St. Louis in May. In May. St. Louis yeah. in May. All right. May. You're coming Old to, group. Coming to okay, St. Louis. Again. There you go. Ben, when are the perfect days? time for the Express Scripts protest, too. Oh, my God. You know, funny story about Express Scripts. So you're going to meet Alex Bryant in May. Alex, our director of operations. Okay. And Alex, man, he talked about wet behind the ears. I love Alex, but he was so green when he came in. Tremendous heart. Wanted to serve people, wanted to help, you know, make pharmacies and make serve communities and families and all that wonderful stuff, which is the, you know, the stuff we like to hear when we're hiring somebody. But um, we went into St. Louis one time because I live about two hours from St. Louis and we were flying to South Carolina and uh, we went in and we went by the Express Scripts buildings and he looked over at me and he's like, 
holy, and I've never heard the man cuss in my life. He said, holy shit. Holy, that's express grips. I'm like, yeah, that's what we're fighting, dude. <laughs> It's like and a whole like, campus, right? Like whatever, whatever you do, oh God, whatever you so do, big. do not say anything about fire and that headquarters. You will get kicked <laughs> off Twitter. <laughs> yeah, that thing's like the Death Star. It's got its own gravitational pull. It's 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 definitely... so big. Yeah. yeah then, Wait, what's amazing can you say is flaming bags of poo. Maybe you can <laughs> might be able to say that. Just don't. If you tag them, you know you might get in trouble. That's uh, the. Uh, <laughs> That's the thing, you know, uh, I have said publicly uh, many a times, I will not put it in writing that, yes, I would love to maybe see that thing go away, know, go away. That's all I'm going to say. Yes, <laughs> go away. Somebody told me one time, like anybody on this thing in podcast, don't go hiking alone ever. <laughs> okay. Just throwing it out there. Somebody told me that would don't ever go hiking alone, dude. You ain't coming back, you know. So, uh, so story. yeah, yeah. Do not go hiking alone. Period. Uh, so, um, so, but, uh, but yeah, we right. we've by. already gotten to our first death threat of the night. Wow, it's still normally pretty early. It's, normally it's a little later when the death threats come out, and normally it's me. Actually, it's been exclusively me. <laughs> so, you, know, you looked like you had something to comment about oh, all of this. No, when you were talking about like throwing bags at their headquarters so i had this humana audit last year this is where i bought the mug from you guys the fuck pbm's mug <laughs> and i thought i had a really genius idea because you know when they give you these audits they send you like a return address to like mail the prescriptions and stuff like that i was like what if i just buy like 10 of these mugs and just mail one like weekly to their office <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so that's amazing, that. Judge. Judge, <laughs> you, Judge you, that you gotta, right. you gotta rotate. <laughs> you gotta rotate mailboxes, different freaking zip codes. You got, you, you got, you got, you got to do it the right way. I was like really close to doing it, but I decided not to. I thought they would figure out it was me. So, <laughs> what, what are they gonna do? What are they gonna do? Throw you in like giving them drinkware? Jail? Like, I don't you know. Didn't do I don't know. Honest, they wanted to claw back like 80k from me, so I was kind of like, I'm already on their shit list. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna aggravate. Here's the thing, more. though. Like, we were all afraid of that. Like back in the day, we were all afraid of saying anything, and now everyone's just like posting contracts openly. Yeah. Like they mm -hmm. they know that they can't do anything to us for this stuff. They could try to kick us out of network if they really want, but if they really start trying to come down on us. They're not going to have network adequacy, and this is not a time that they want to draw a lot of attention to them coming down on us. That that is absolutely hundred percent true. I, you know, we see the communications on the back end, so we we see the communications from CMS to the carriers, and uh, it's amazing. So you guys, when you become an agent and you you own your own book of business and you start doing this, you'll start to see the back inside. So when uh, there's a certain PSAO who decided not to take Express Scripts on the Medicare side. Immediately, an email went out from CMS saying you've you've got network adequacy issues to uh, to uh, Express Scripts on the Medicare side, and it was like you've got a certain amount of days to remedy this and tell us how you're going to be able to provide your services to Medicare patients. So, so it it got our attention. Like, holy crap, that was one that was one PSAO who opted out. What if every PSAO opted out of that? There's going to be massive adequacy issues. So I don't know if oh they could if they actually like did anything worth a shit. I know that, but I did I did hear there's one other PSA who's not going to take Express Scripts Medicare next year. I don't know if that's true or not. I've dropped Express Scripts a lot because I hate that fucking company. But again, I've heard there's another PSA getting ready to do it too, which is a, a pretty big one. So maybe I know Mutual of Omaha pulled out of the Medicare space and they were an Express Scripts partner. So maybe just maybe. Maybe there, maybe there is a way, you know, PSAs, but they just got to opt out of the damn contracts, you know, and who's willing to do that? Which PSAs are willing to do that? That's the question at this point. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. The PSAOs, if they weren't owned by the wholesalers, we could actually see a little more consolidation with it, like we see with American pharmacies. Yeah. And there could actually be some power and we could actually swat a few things around. That would be excellent. Uh, we're going to need to get buying groups on board with doing something on like that, though, because the buying groups think they're getting a better deal by going with the wholesaler PSAOs. Sure, and sure. in a lot of cases, you know, we are getting a better overall deal as far as like prices or whatever, but at what overall cost when we could go with 
a single PSAO taking care of indies that could just be like, nope, no indies going to accept this. Go fuck yourself. We wouldn't have DIRs if that were the case. I, I know, so, I know. If we could just get, if we could just get everything pointed, all pharmacies and all of these organizations pointed the same direction on like one issue, two issues. You know what I'm saying? It's like I've been saying that forever. If we get united under one freaking issue and all attack that issue at the same time, but that would involve a lot of freaking people putting egos aside. And, and you know to do that, maybe yeah, that's one day. The biggest problem. There's a whole lot of ginormous egos who want all the credit. When really, you have us lowly uh, owners down here going, "I don't care who gets the credit. Can we just fix some something, anything?" Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. We we just want to make we just want to <laughs> we want to make more than forty seven cents on a freaking lisinopril for crying out loud or whatever you make now on that freaking drug. So yeah, yeah. No, I get it. It's it's if we could if we could get that that would be that'd be phenomenal you know again again one of the things there are some ways to unite though there are some ways maybe it's not in the pharmacy side maybe it is on the insurance side maybe there is a way to unite everybody together to to point the direction that hey you know because again there 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 are possibilities you're on, you're on a podcast kiddo did you know that Hi! Oh, our hey, youngest you're, visitor you're, on the podcast. You're, 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 on, ah, the podcast. you're, on, a, you're on a podcast. Ah. <laughs> you don't like PBMs either? That we want to tell me. I I want to tell you. I got the dog gun because I wanted to sell it. Okay, perfect. Thank We're you, buddy. Very intently, like yeah. <laughs> he got, he got, he got the dark gun. He went. Yeah. Well, so. I mean, and, and there we go. That ties right back into National Stress Relief Month. PBMs are stressful. We have a dart gun. I know. We can shoot darts at PBMs. I, I know. Ooh, shoot darts. That yeah. would the relieve the stress. Need to be hey, 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 poisonous, poisonous darts. <laughs> hey, listen, listen, listen. Poisonous listen. darts. Yeah, poisonous it, darts. It could no. be poisonous darts. No. It could just be things that would maybe, you know, knock sense into them. Tranquilizer darts. That would be better. Tranquilizer. Yeah, that would be. Yeah, that would that would be good. So oh, my power on. just came back on. Sweet. Yeah, there's Brandy. Hey. 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 That just goes to show that with enough hate, anything can happen. Exactly. Exactly. That's been exactly. my motto. Most everything I've accomplished is out of spot. Mm-hmm. There yeah. you go. Which is why I actually, that's what actually got me on board with what Mark Cuban's trying to do. Brandy was telling me, no, no, like he's doing this. It was once we really started to understand him and understood that like what Cuban's doing right now, it isn't because he wants to make a ton of money. It's because the PBM screwed him out of money and he's doing all of this out of spot. Yeah, he's, and he's, that resonates with me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so I'm. Yeah. Uh, that's what got me on board with like what he was trying to do. I was like, no, I get that. No, I yeah. I create yeah. this whole thing. I wouldn't even have to make money if it could just break even and it just like hurt them in some way. I would do it. So yeah. I get it. Yeah. Like that's what I I got yeah. it. Yeah, dude's just pissed off, man. You, you mean? Yeah, he's mad. Like, he found out what his like broker was making and shit. He's just he's like, yeah, I was like, this is ridiculous. Yeah, you know. Damn, it's there. If oh, you can get the, the brokers, data. they they need to be on the chopping block too. But we're focused once we get reimbursement, and we need to be laser focused on reimbursement. Once reimbursement is taken care of, we need to go after the brokers, the wholesalers, everything else. But right now, we just need to care about reimbursement. And honestly, if reimbursement were good enough, you know, they could play their stupid rebate games and do whatever finance bullshit that they wanted to. I wouldn't even care anymore. Yeah, list prices are big, but they're doing all their back alley nonsense and the CBO is going to score it this way or whatever. I wouldn't care if we weren't getting so fucked. That's the thing is if we got everything to where reimbursement was good and patients weren't paying out the ass and we weren't getting screwed, then you think we care? But no, it's all greed. Like they yeah. had to have more and they had to have infinite gains in a finite world and they're having to squeeze every single way that they can. And eventually that's not going to work anymore. Yep. Yep. Eventually you, you, you push too far, you know, well, you, you put you to basically bankrupt us and, you know, basically yeah. pillage every aspect of the chain until they have everything. So paying us properly is not in the, in the mindset for them. No, and here's the thing. They know they can't bankrupt every single one of us. That's the thing. They can't because they'll have issues. Everyone will have issues, and it will actually cause 
more to come down on them as far as lawmakers and regulators than it normally would. Right now, we're in a period where they're just trying to squeeze out as many as possible under the guys of, yeah. oh, well, we're just doing what CMS told us. Yeah, that's yeah, they, what yeah, they're doing. Yeah, they can't call. They can't cause like a mass, a mass extinction event at the same time. Because yeah, it would just, it would just. I mean, they're they're coming close right now. I, I know, I know they are. I know, bad. I know, I know it is. I know it is. I know it is. I know. But yeah, and, they they couldn't pull it to the point where we all went out at the same time, even though it's very close right now. It's mostly cash flow crunch. Reimbursement overall is absolute shit and terrible. And but one thing that they're pulling right now is making the cash flow crunch that bad sure. so that you get it to people who don't have those reserves and don't have access to that kind of cash. They have to sell. Sure. And if you could just shake the tree and get those out, then whenever reimbursement reform comes around or they've got to settle this or do that, it's going to be way less for them. Sure. Yeah. Yep. No, that, that makes sense. I mean, that makes sense. Like I, I've been telling everybody, I think Express Scripts is just outright declared war on the independent pharmacy at this point. Oh, uh, they all some, have. some of the shit. Uh, yeah. I know, but Express Scripts, you know, I don't know much. I know in certain, certain places around the country, certain there's, there's better payers. And I say better, it's all relative, but, um, but it seems like the Express Scripts contracts were just was a, abysmal. So, but, but, uh, but yeah, they can't, they couldn't do it because of the stink that it would cause. Like you were talking, Jeremy, the stink that it would cause people would say, man, you know what? You know, I like my independent. There's a whole bunch of people like they're independent. Now they're all going out of business. So I, I think it's been slowly, but surely kind of, kind of turning the money supply off. Well, you know, we, has gotten very greedy lately, getting TRICARE and getting numerous other things. They took a hold of, uh, the Virginia state retirement and wrap that up in their Part D plan. And we didn't know that. And we turned down the Part D plan. And we didn't realize we were turning down the Virginia retirement plan. So after I spent sent a very strongly worded email to Express Scripts calling them vampires and fucking scum <laughs> and everything else, my dad had to come back later and send an email being like, actually, we will take that contract because the Virginia retirement contract is actually really good. But oh. the part D part is terrible. <laughs> and by vampires, I meant. My, yes, yes. my yes. son did not mean that you yeah, are yeah. a pathetic piece of excrement and that he hopes that you and your family burn alive in your house. <laughs> he did not mean that in that email. He's got a very particular sense of humor. Yes, that's right. <laughs> That's how, that's, really how express, that's how he expresses his loves. <laughs> well, and besides, you. everybody knows that Express Scripts wants to work with community pharmacies. I mean, they did after We're all. We're their valued partner. Last fall. Yeah, valued yeah. partner. Yeah. I'm yeah, so yeah. fucking valued. Yeah. Yeah. Value the so shit out valued. of myself. You guys I, did see the um, statement that PCMA sent to that Kansas news station. PCMA literally sent the statement on um, PBM support rural pharmacies in Kansas and nationwide through innovative programs that increase reimbursements. Yeah, that, none of that exists. Dad's got a rural pharmacy. That don't, that don't fucking exist. Yeah, that is. That I, I, I've is just... missed the boat on that apparently yeah. forever. Deb, you have a rural pharmacy. Do PBMs do this? Oh, absolutely. They bring me trinkets and bonbons every Friday. <laughs> nice. Nice. If you tell you you're having a good hair day and that you've never looked better, <laughs> you can I, do this. They're very supportive. Yeah. yeah. Hey, so y'all want to well, hear? Well, they funny are story? scared of Deb, so I'd believe that. I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I can be. see it. <laughs> hey, so so I got a funny story about a PBM. I, I haven't told a lot of people this, but it's a perfect opportunity. To so I was at a trade show one time, and they invited CVS Caremark to come oh. in. CVS Caremark decided they were going to send some representatives. I don't know this lady's last name. Her name is Wendy. And I know she worked for CVS Caremark. And so Wendy at the closing night party was completely overserved. Okay. She's bombed out of her mind. And, um, great already. <laughs> okay, oh, yeah. This is, yeah, this is classic. I mean, this is a wonderful story. So I walked up to, I walked, I walked up to her and I was like, Hey, uh, I know you're with Caremark and, uh, just kind of what's going on. And, and, and she's like, you know what? We're like the best friends to independent pharmacies. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh, oh <my>. really? <laughs> really? Yeah, I'm not surprised. Okay, so I called one of my buddies over. And this is a, he's a good old boy from Mississippi. And I said, so-and-so, I'm not going to tell you his name. He probably wouldn't give a crap. But 
he, I said, what do you tell me what you think of CVS care Mark? And he said, ma'am, I wouldn't piss down your throat if your heart was on fire. Oh my God. And that lady looked was like, I mean, it just stunned her. And yeah. uh, I mean, and I was like, this is what these people think about you. They don't want to be your friend. I can promise you that. Yeah. You ain't gonna be, you're not going to be the best friends at the pharmacy. Now, now, this is where it gets freaking crazy. Okay. So now she's, she's talking about how they take DIR fees and they keep 30%, but they're not making any money on it. So <laughs> this is where I, this right. is where I politely started calling her Pinocchio and uh, she's getting pissed at me. And then finally she's like, well, we work with blue cross blue shield of Arkansas. We're trying to get them to move down the continuum of reimbursement. I looked at her and I said, are you telling me you're trying to convince blue cross blue shield to pay their independence less? And she's like, that's not what I said. This is exactly what you said. Yeah. It's it exactly is, uh, what you said. Uh, that's what happens. And that's what you encounter whenever you get other pharmacists or anyone else in the industry that's on that particular side. I encounter them a lot on like Reddit, social media and everything else. They really do drink that Kool-Aid and they really, really do believe that because I mean, some of them, you know, on some level, they know it's bullshit on other levels. They drink it and they have to believe it because if they don't, they can't fucking sleep at night. Yeah, That's right. That's right. Yeah. I mean, you, how could and, you sleep at night knowing you're yeah. fucking all these people over? You got to yeah. really believe that you help them. I mean, you got to really drink the Kool-Aid. Yeah. And that's why I like, sometimes love- when you put things out there, you will get a lot of pushback from people that are on that side because I mean, really they are defending themselves and not just their company because it would actually hurt them to think that they do it that way. Also fuck those people. I don't care about them and I hope their feelings get hurt. <laughs> yeah. So hey, I don't hey, care. Dude, hey, it's not your responsibility for freaking telling them the damn truth. They should actually Google their own freaking company for crying out loud and they'd actually see the truth. I would love their little hearts than to be a fly on the wall after uh, Senate Bill 188 got through in Kentucky. You watched that then, hearing, didn't you? Oh, yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, this is an absolute game changer. And there was no opposition except for, oh, what's his name? Connor, I think, from PCMA. The PCMA lobbyist is the same lobbyist that's actually in Georgia. He's been in Florida and he did not have any new talking points to say. He had the exact same thing he said in the Kentucky Senate committee hearing a couple weeks ago that the chair actually was able to discredit. He was trying to compare the hospital systems owning specialists and other entities as a similarly vertically integrated conglomerate, such as the PBM insurance retail pharmacy mail order system. There is Connor's last name, by the way. Rose. Yes. So, on a rose. So, do I detect a hokey farm throwdown? <laughs> oh yeah, but a little bit something. <laughs> well, uh, he just has the same. On my radar. <laughs> he, he has the same ten talking points, so it's very easy to figure out what he's going to say because he just has his list of things. The anthem rep that was speaking in opposition, she at least switched hers up a little bit. She said. You know, I'm definitely going to be back here next session because there was also talk that, okay, they've done this in the Medicaid space in Kentucky. They're now doing this with the state employee plans. So the next step would be commercial market. And, you know, they've tried to throw in ERISA issues and all of those things. And most of them were easily batted away by either the chair or other committee members saying, we don't believe you. So that was nice to hear. At least we're getting to the point where lawmakers are just not believing them. <laughs> yeah, it, it would be We've nice. We've come a long way in the last few years. Yeah, sure, yeah. So yeah. For everyone listening, um, what was this bill about? They may not realize. So this bill is a continuation of Senate Bill 50, which was passed a couple years ago by Senator Max Wise. This right. bill, Senate Bill 188, it allows for independent pharmacies to receive a $10.64 dispensing fee for the state 
employee plans, it does carve out the retirees, so the 65 and older, because those are technically um, Medicare Part D eligible patients. And so it will still have a large group of people that this bill will impact. Hopefully will help independent pharmacies as well. And they did carve out chains from being able to access the 1064 dispensing fee because they are having the state run a neutral actuarial study instead of waiting to hear what the PCMA-led research is going to say or the independent pharmacy-led research. They're having their Department of Insurance run an actuarial study, so it should be a little more third-party neutral. And then that will actually set the dispensing fee. But they put this bill in so that almost like a stopgap so independent pharmacies can get this nationally recognized reimbursement level of 1064, and then they will do the actuarial study, and it could take up to two years. So they didn't want more pharmacies to close. So they want to do this. So that passed the Senate committee. They ended up having to do a Senate amendment so that that carve out for just the independent pharmacies would take place. And that ended up lowering the fiscal impact on what could potentially be a cost to the state. But as many people mentioned in the committee hearing, that there was actually a savings to the state of $282 million when they went to a single PBM in the Medicaid space in Kentucky. So Kentucky was very much in support of this. And they kept mentioning how independent pharmacies in Kentucky and their patients really called and got all their legislators to side with this. So it made it very easy to support this bill because one of the members mentioned that not supporting this bill was pretty much the definition of insanity. You cannot do the same thing over and over again and expect different results. So you cannot continue listening to PCMA's talking points of, oh, the sky is falling, the premiums are going to increase, copays are going to increase to patients if you pass PBM reform. But then you don't pass PBM reform and prices still go up. Pharmacies still close. Patients still have no access. I mean, it's the most comprehensive bill we've seen that I've seen anywhere that addresses dispensing fees and then steering and it also addresses enforcement like i mean it's exactly what i've been saying we need in texas that's amazing yeah walgreens and kroger came out against it suddenly at the end whenever it passed the senate because they thought it was unfair and it's hilarious that they're fucking saying that because they get a much higher reimbursement than we do on their drugs. Yeah. So they came out and they're just like, no, we should get this dispensing fee too. Yeah. Fuck off. Shut the <laughs> fuck up. Fuck these people. Yeah. I shared something on Facebook um, where there was a drugstore independent that closed and they showed the reimbursement that they got versus the three closest chains, which I think one of them was a grocery store. Yeah. It's freaking Georgia. It. It, Georgia, you saw that? You saw that shit? Yeah. And that, yeah. Yeah. It's infuri- infuriating, infuriating. And then, uh, you know, and then the PBM comes back and says, oh, these were just obscure drugs that no one uses. And I'm like, a Torvastatin? Well, a, yeah, right? a Torvastatin? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Damn like, it. Obscure yeah. drugs. They're just, you know, top 10 this, drugs. Yeah, just yeah. every single freaking human on this planet is on that freaking drug. Okay. Sorry. It's <laughs> obscure. Very yeah. obscure. Yeah. Yeah, I mean they're yeah. they're used at this point. I think it's actually been a detriment to them that they've had this much control because they don't have a gauge on what they can say that sounds outlandish because they're used to just like saying whatever and everyone's just like, oh yeah, yeah, okay, that's that's right, hey. that's right. You all are the experts, and now they're just saying things like this, like oh no, no one's on a tour of a statin. They're going to say this, and they're used to people just, like, believing all of their bullshit that they think that'll fly, and it just doesn't. I have a question for you really quick. So, say you have this group of brokers, if you will. So, we'll we'll call ourselves brokers slash pharmacy Mm -hmm. owners who are not acting as pharmacy owners. Yes, yes. Could we potentially have any bargaining power with these PBMs about plans and reimbursements if we have patients who are going no we don't want this or if we start to see you know more pharmacies saying we're not taking these plans is there a potential down the line for some kind of bargaining power with that so i'm gonna i'm gonna give you the simple answer i'm gonna wink twice for no once for yes (laughs) 
We're, so we're coming hey. to the end of our drinks. And this has been a delightful conversation. There's actually quite a lot to be optimistic about today, Ben. Thank you so yep, much. Yep. Thank you, everybody. And so I think, uh, as is our tradition often on the podcast, we should uh, pick something to drink to. And I will give that honor to Ben. Ben, what are we drinking to tonight? It, as you see my little my daughter right here. Yes. I, I, I'm drinking to a brighter future for her and for her to be able to go into an independent pharmacy in the future where she doesn't have to go to a, we call CVS in my household, come visit Satan. So she does not, she will not have to be forced to go to a drugstore she doesn't want to go to. She can go to an independent. Love it. So that's, All right. That's we'll what, drink to that. Yep. Absolutely. Sona, Thank did you, you have yeah. anything you wanted to drink to? You know? I think this is nice to have other independent pharmacists from all over talk to each other and see what's going on. I mean, you get stuck in your own little world of doing what you're doing and every day you're trying to mitigate losses. And you don't, you know, like I felt so by myself this whole time. I'm trying to, you know, see the e-scripts. What are these weird prescriptions for like random things that, you know, people don't really take? How much does this cost? Can I buy it somewhere else? And, you know, being able to listen to the podcast and meet people and talk about this is very relieving that I'm not alone but also to hear about like new laws that are coming on board and people are see people seem very focused on I made something special for you. right now which is a very positive thing well all right absolutely Thanks for that too I'm right, feeling ready. thank you so much for joining us tonight and for everyone listening thank you and we will see you all next week on PBM on the rocks Thank y'all. Bye. Here you go. Keep, Bye. Keep, Bye. Keep, Bye. Keep, keep the fight up. To learn more about Pharmacist United for Truth and Transparency and how you can help fight PBM abuse of our healthcare system, visit our website at truthrx.org.